Hello, this is Dr. Benjamin Norris from the chemistry department at Frostburg State University. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about alcohol dehydration. A dehydration reaction for an alcohol is a conversion between an alcohol compound and an alkene. Uh, and to balance this chemical equation, I need to add H2O on the product side. This is a dehydration in the sense that we are removing what is effectively a molecule of water from a, an alcohol structure. Right? So if we have my 2-propanol over here on the left, its chemical formula is C3H8O, and the alkene on the right, C3H6, the difference between these is uh, H2O, the model, model or so the uh, formula for water. So again, dehydration. And if we're looking at uh, specifically what we are removing, we are removing uh, the OH group of the alcohol and a hydrogen on the neighboring position. We're moving these two, and I'm going to change their color here in a moment. And the labels are going to be red. Right? So we're removing this OH and this hydrogen, and we're making an alkene. And you might recognize uh, this sort of pattern that we're removing these two things. Right? And, and I'm going to use this notation down here under the arrow. This minus H2O notation means that we are removing water uh, from the structure of our, our reactant. You might actually recognize this pattern as something that occurs in other places. Uh, so for example, if this was a chlorine and we had an appropriate reagent like uh, some kind of strong base, and we would be doing an E2 elimination reaction. So this is an elimination reaction. And I need to go back to, to having black here. So this gives you uh, sort of an, uh, a suggestion of where we're going with this. This dehydration reaction is going to be uh, an elimination. So a dehydration of an alcohol is an elimination reaction. And if you've uh, studied anything about elimination reaction, that means we're going to need a good leaving group. And we know that the alcohol, the alcohol by itself is not a good leaving group. So we need to use some kind of strategy ask this question, how can we make it a better leaving group? Well, one strategy that you perhaps have seen before is to convert the alcohol or to react the alcohol with some sort of strong acid, uh, like uh, in this case, let's use hydrogen bromide as my uh, strong acid. This is going to generate a substitution reaction. And from a mechanism standpoint, what that looks like is uh, first a proton transfer or, or acid base reaction between the alcohol and hydrogen bromide. That protonated alcohol, now we have a good leaving group. This, this here is now a good leaving group. I'm going to abbreviate leaving group. Oh, what happened to my arrow? I'll just draw it again. And that leaving group will leave. We'll form a carbocation. And 
then we have this bromide anion hanging around from the last, uh, from the beginning of the reaction that can act as a nucleophile and will uh, get together with that carbocation and do a net substitution reaction. We're going to uh, use something very similar, except we're going to swap our HBr with a another acid, this time sulfuric acid. Oops, sulfuric acid looks like a chemical formula. Um, here is a, a more expanded version of sulfuric acid. We no longer have this bromide, and we know we're going to end up with a different product. So let me. Uh, let me at least get to the starting point here. And the starting point is we have uh, an acid-base reaction between the alcohol and sulfuric acid. It protonates the alcohol, makes it a good leaving group. The leaving group can leave, forming a carbocation in this case. And we just need something that uh, can remove this extra proton. Actually, let's see. Here's the uh, hydrogen sulfate anion. It's the conjugate base of sulfuric acid. Uh, I'm going to use it as my uh, base in this elimination reaction. And you might say, well, wait a minute, it's not a very good base. True, but it's also probably the only base that we have. Right. So here we have now sulfuric acid, and, and yes, this produces uh, a molecule of water as the uh, as a byproduct. And, oh, good grief! Apologies here. Let me get this formatted correctly. Great. All right. So now. I just want to talk to you a little bit about um, regioselectivity uh, of this reaction. Uh, if you've studied some elimination reactions before, then you know that uh, many times there are more than one possible alkene product, and, and here I'm going to ignore stereo, you know what, actually, let's, let's make stereochemistry irrelevant for the moment, okay. that there's more than one possible outcome, sometimes two, unfrequently three. Um, you know, we can have the, the Hoffman elimination product, the le less substituted, or the Zaitsev uh, elimination product, the more substituted. And the elimination of, or the dehydration of alcohols are almost exclusively going to form the Zaitsev The Zaitsev product is going to be preferred. Why are we going to prefer the Zaitsev product? Let's actually scroll back up here to this mechanism that I drew and ask ourselves, what elimination mechanism do we have here? Is this the E1 elimination mechanism or is it the E2 elimination mechanism? We form a good leaving group. The leaving group leaves. We have a carbocation, and then we have proton transfer. This is the E1 mechanism. And the E1 mechanism tends to prefer formation of the most stable possible product. So Zaitsev is preferred in almost all cases. Now let's talk about uh, stereoselectivity. And since we know that this is an E1 process, now we can probably guess what uh, stereochemical outcome is most likely. In this case, I'm only going to focus on the two possible Zaitsev products, the E and the Z Zaitsev products. Um, and if you've already studied the stereoselectivity of E1 reactions, then you know that the E 
isomer, which is so. If the E isomer is more stable, the Z isomer has a little bit of steric hindrance between those those two alkyls. So here the E isomer predominates here. So uh, just as a quick summary, let's go back up to the top. We can have a dehydration of an alcohol. This is an elimination reaction. It requires an acid like sulfuric acid. Um, instead of, of, of a nucleophilic acid like HCl or HBr. It's an E1 elimination mechanism, and it tends to form the Zaitsev product, preferably, and it tends to form the... Uh, so it tends to perform, uh, form the E stereoisomer, preferably, because it's an E1 elimination, right? And the E1 elimination the loss of leaving group is the most, uh, is the rate determining step. And after that, uh, the more the more stable possible isomer is going to form. Uh, we, it's also, there's also some equilibrium considerations that if you want to get, get uh, farther into it, you could. Uh, but that's pretty much the reason we get most stable possible alkene out of the uh, E1 reaction mechanism. This concludes my video here on the, the dehydration of alcohols. I'm going to make another video uh, that's going to cover or the difference between the reactions of alcohols with nucleophilic acids and those with uh,